out of the inky blackness, another strange beast, the god of the sea, Neptune. It looks serene, but that spot is a storm the size of Earth, whipped up by savage 1,500 kilometer an hour winds. Back on Earth, it's the sun that drives the wind. But Neptune's too far away. Something else must be creating these ferocious winds. But nobody knows what. Plunging further into the solar system's outer reaches. Orbiting the gas giant, a solid moon, Triton. It's solid, but far from stable. It's covered in geysers, cosmic chimneys pumping out strange soot. And it's orbiting Neptune in the opposite direction to the planet's spin. A cosmic battle of wills that this angry moon is always going to lose. It's being slowed down, reeled in by Neptune's massive gravity. One day Triton will be ripped apart. We've seen every planet in our solar system. But beyond the planets, it's not empty. It's teeming with frozen rocks, icy spheres. Like Pluto. Until recently, it seemed Pluto was alone, that there was nothing else out here. We were wrong. More frozen worlds. Discoveries so new, nobody can agree what to call them. Plutinos, ice dwarfs, cubuanos. It seems our solar system isn't the neat model we thought it was. It's littered with debris and rubble left over from its creation. Over 13 billion kilometers from home. The most distant thing ever seen to orbit the sun. Another small, icy world, called Sedna, discovered in 2003. Its orbit takes 10,000 years and sends it 130 billion kilometers from the sun. There's something else out here. 16 billion kilometers from home, the space probe Voyager 1. If it wasn't for this, we'd have no images of the giant planets, no clue about their strange moons. It's traveling 20 times faster than a bullet, sending messages home. That gold panel it's a kind of intergalactic message in a bottle. There's a greeting recorded in 55 different languages. And a map showing how to find our solar system. But do we really want to advertise our existence? Anyone, anything could hear our call, find out where we live, and come knocking, friend or foe. Next, a cloud of cosmic icebergs. Frozen blocks of water, dust and gas, like the comet we saw earlier. It was comets that may have planted the seeds of life on Earth billions of years ago. And if they came from out here, seeing all this ice, perhaps they carried water to Earth too. 
the water in the oceans, in your coffee, even in your body, all from this distant celestial ice machine. We're eight million million. That's eight trillion kilometers from home. Our journey is nearing its end. Behind us lies a solar system that's stranger, more beautiful, more terrifying than we could ever have imagined. But we've come too far not to take a look at what lies beyond. At just one of the billions of stars out there. What a view. Each tiny speck of light, a star like our own sun. Many with planets. Many of those with moons. Countless worlds, infinite possibilities in every direction. Forty trillion kilometers from home. A 150,000 year ride in the space shuttle. And we've finally reached our solar system's nearest neighbor. Alpha Centauri. There are no planets here. Just three stars like our own sun. But there must be other solar systems out here, more like our own. With planets. Perhaps even habitable planets. There may be even ones out there that are home to life. But right now, we just don't know. The only place in the universe where we know life exists is our home, Earth. Our own little corner of space. It's only now, having traveled so far, seen so much, that we can appreciate its beauty, its complex, Wonderful, infinite.